And welcome back to the program. I'm joined now by Heather Larkin. She is the CEO of the Arkansas Community Foundation. Good to have you with us. Nice to be here. Thank yes, you. Yes, this is your time of the year. It is. I mean, all season. year is your time of the year, but people seem to be in a more generous and giving mood from Thanksgiving to Christmas. It is very true that this is the season of giving uh, for nonprofits. It's a year round business, but the end of the year is when most nonprofits uh, bring in most of their revenue. I always want you to start off with telling everybody what the Arkansas Community Foundation does because it just sounds like you found communities, but there's, but, but tell everybody what you do. It's a little more complicated, but we are a statewide grant making foundation. We work in all 75 counties. We are the largest grant maker in the state by the number of grants we give, not by the dollars, but we touch about four to 5,000 nonprofits every year. And uh, we make our grants uh, primarily through donor relationships. So donors establish funds with us. Mm -hmm. We help them make those grants to improve the nonprofit sector in Arkansas. Give me just kind of one recent example that highlights that uh, partnership. Uh, well, we've got a donor who established a, a donor advised fund years ago. Their family meets every Thanksgiving, sits around the table. They discuss their charitable giving. We help them process those charitable grants, get those grant proposals in, and then get the checks out the door for year-end giving. All right, that's how it works, kids. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. All right, I wanna back up. I wanna talk about what happened in the pandemic. I wanna come later to what happened out of the pandemic, yeah. but let's begin. What, what did you see in terms of charitable giving when the pandemic hit? Yeah, well, of course, it was the perfect storm. Um, uh, lots of nonprofits suffered a great deal, in fact, the, the statistics show us now that over half of nonprofits were in a position of real danger on their financial stability through the pandemic. Needs were up and for a while donations were down as we were trying to figure out how to give and how to respond. Uh, but nonprofits did adapt and donors did dig deep and really focus in primarily on human services, mm -hmm. um, types of giving as you would expect. The arts programs and some of those nonprofits suffered a little more throughout the pandemic, but uh, donors did respond. Donors did respond. What were some of the adaptations? What did some people, what did some nonprofits well, do differently? What did some donors mm -hmm. do differently? As you can imagine, um, many nonprofits, one of their primary revenue streams are events, right. as you know, <laughs> well. and there were no events during yeah. COVID. And so nonprofits had to quickly adapt to either virtual events, digital and virtual appeals, uh, even from you know just meeting donors, it all went to to Zoom and to online meetings to try to engage those relationships. And I think most nonprofits did a really good job. Volunteers during COVID that was another um, adaptation because we could not have volunteers come into our nonprofits, and so the food banks had to really uh, pivot and figure out how to work when you don't have a volunteer base. And they did. They did. Um, so that whole process of giving and, and everything being more virtual, mm -hmm. um, that's just, I, I have found it's unsustainable in the long run. Part of giving and connecting with nonprofits and uh, organizations that do good in the community is about face-to-face -face relationships yes. and, and touch points, quite frankly. Yes. Um, I, I just wonder if you agree with that philosophy that, I mean, it, it worked and they survived, but it's not the model for yeah. the future. That is that is very true. To, to get people to give, you have to have a, a relationship and really a, a connection. Um, and so what nonprofits have had to do and will continue to have to do is to get better and better at that digital store, storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to be able to get our message out uh, digital, digitally, virtually and then build those relationships. That's the case with young donors too, Roby. Um, they're our future, of course, and they're very, very generous. Millennials are extremely generous. You have to get to them somehow through technology. But once you get to them, you have got to build a relationship. They're very relationship oriented about their nonprofits and their charitable giving. And it's a, it's a challenge for nonprofits to, to figure this out. Um, increasing our ability to work with donors, new donors, existing donors uh, through technology, but then to build that personal relationship 
so that they'll continue to give. What you're telling me is you're about to start a TikTok division over well, at the Arkansas Community Foundation. <laughs> the younger and smarter people than I, uh, perhaps. We're going to have to figure that out. All right, so post-pandemic, mm -hmm. as things have returned to whatever the new normal is, mm -hmm. what, what have you seen happening um, kind of after, the w when it's been okay to get back mm -hmm. together again? Well, we, some good news. Uh, donations are continuing to increase. Donor retention has increased. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of nonprofits found new donors during COVID as, as people tried to respond, and those donors have stuck with uh, those nonprofits. Um, I think going forward again, it's all about balancing the events and the personal relationships with online giving. Online giving is here to stay, just like online shopping. We see that through Giving Tuesday, yep. of course. What did you see this last Giving Tuesday? I mean, I know it's early and you can't say yeah. everything's settled, but I mean, you did see activity and you probably have gotten some preliminary estimates yeah. of how some folks yeah. have done. It looks good so far. Uh, giving Tuesday is, it's it's like everything. It's like Cyber Monday We're we're, soaked in emails i mean i'm in the business and delete 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 well i got about 50 of them yep. so i mean you i'm know. right there with we you we all so. get them but it, it does work because what you do is you delete 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 until you see your nonprofit. and when if you have that relationship and you believe in that cause then you do pause on on giving tuesday and make that gift i did yeah um so there is saturation there is some donor fatigue perhaps of the information that we get but as far as charitable giving, the numbers look good. I think people are going to continue uh, to support the nonprofits that have made their case, can show impact, and that you know that touch that touch us individually. We typically see that happen even when there's recessionary pressures mm -hmm. out there in Arkansas, at mm -hmm. least. the The level of giving really does not slow down yep. dramatically. I mean, it, it can be a you can witness it, but it does not uh, impact Arkansas that giving is, like it does in some other areas correct. of the country. Um, where did Giving Tuesday, where did that, who created that? Where did that? Well, it's a national uh, PR campaign basically based mm -hmm. on um, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. It was an opportunity for the nonprofit sector to say, you know, this we are entering the giving season, so let's have a day. And Tuesday was the next day, so <laughs> Giving Tuesday um, was created. Uh, it is It is a virtual kind of unorganized PR campaign, much like the other days, Cyber Monday, yeah, small it's giving. done well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, well. like you said, I mean, the uh, uh, amount of requests that I got mm -hmm. and the fact that you can see mm -hmm. all those organizations participating and, and having that activity, yeah. you know, it's there. All right, let's look into 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of what do you see on the horizon uh, in terms of philanthropy and what do you, what's kind of the new normal now? Well, I think going forward, um, couple of things would come to mind. One, uh, volunteerism. Nonprofits are going to have to figure this out. Volunteerism is on the decline uh, overall. How we volunteer, the number of people who volunteer, it, it's just going to be different going forward. And so for the nonprofits that depend on a volunteer base, we're going to have to shift and adapt mm -hmm. uh, somehow to paying people or attracting people in. The second, That's not volunteering. If uh, you're yeah, that's them. right. <laughs> we have to find a new name for it. Uh, the second thing is just the, the future of giving, the millennials. I mean, 60% of millennials give to charity. They are extremely generous. It's a, it's a refreshing um, future for charitable giving. But how we connect with them and how we engage them is a lot different than Gen X uh, or baby boomers. And so figuring out, like I said earlier, you have to get them through technology, but then you have to build that relationship and build trust with them to be very transparent and you have to be very very engaging yeah you know the days of getting a gift and then going and doing with it are over it's getting a gift and bringing that donor with you generically speaking they're super sensitive to mm -hmm. I mean like one yeah. thing can turn them off oh, and yeah. they're never coming back oh, yeah. sort of thing what about Gen Z my daughter's 15 so I got to figure out they are where next. we go <laughs> well, yeah any characteristics there? yeah um, I don't know I can't really answer that I suspect that they are going to continue that trend of being highly charitable, highly engaged, and um, needing to see social impact. Yeah. You know, they need to see it. They I need to believe in you. I suspect that if their older brothers and sisters see them, yeah. they'll do it. Heather Larkin, CEO of Arkansas Community Foundation, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're back to wrap up right after this.